Hi, I'm Mike Henry, and this is my Procreate 4.2 demo for the piece I call Take 5. Now that's what I call it. I don't know what the actual original artist calls it. Uh, Renato, someone who I work with, a good dude, um, he goes by Renato3XL on Instagram. And you can see right here, this was his original piece. And he also recently did a Draw This In Your Style. And he tagged me in it, and I thought, yeah, that sounds like fun. So let's see what I can do with it. You already saw a little bit of a preview in the intro there. And now let's just start uh, working it. Um, in previous pieces, I've or pre previous videos, I've talked about the use of reference. Obviously, this is a really good case where you need reference because you're trying to replicate something that somebody else did. Now there's lots of different ways that you can do the draw this in your style. You can completely redraw the character in a different way, uh, a different pose, but still try to capture the essence of the character. Uh, the way that I decided to do it was try to more or less capture that pose, but then just go with some of my more aesthetic, my, my more personal aesthetic choices, as well as some proportion changes that I normally do, and that's a essentially how you end up with the version that I did here. So you can see me right now, I'm matching the pose, but I'm using my shapes and my language, my visual language, uh, that I normally do when I'm doing a female. Now the vibe of this piece has this sort of noir, um, like piano bar type vibe, and so I wanted to capture that as much as possible, um, while also trying to use some of the things that I felt were uh, important in Renato's piece. So for instance, the design of the character, the clothes that she's wearing, the sort of uh, big 2D shapes of her hair, uh, obviously her the, the fact that she's holding the cigarette and things like that, that's what I wanted to keep. Um, in addition to some of the treatment that he has in his, he's got this like really, really bright white uh, rim light, like key light rim light, and I thought that that would be really fun to also bring in. Although I wasn't entirely sure I was gonna do it the whole time, but you see that I did ultimately end up doing it. Every other change in here is really just something that I felt like doing at the time, and that's what drove uh, anything that's different from Renato's. So here, let's tighten, uh, get a tighter shot of the cleaner lines. Uh, again, the actual file for this is way higher res than what you see here, um, the way that Procreate captures a uh, portrait a portrait ratioed image, um, you know, it really locks down that vertical pixel. So it's not the greatest, sharpest thing, but, but you can see a little bit of what's going on here. I wanted to capture some of the expression, but then, of course, make it my own at the same time. That's why these challenges are so fun. What you get to decide to be yours and what you want to keep from the original and all that, that's, that's why it's a lot of fun. I mean, really, that's sort of the key fun behind like fan art as well, right? Doing something really fun with something that is otherwise expected. So you get to keep certain rules and then change certain rules. I just have a blast doing these. Now one thing that you may have spotted is the final drawing, her eyes are smaller than here. Um, I know I do really big eyes a lot of the time, but I actually felt that it wasn't working here. Um, obviously, you know, most of the pieces that I do, the sort of one eye apart thing never really happens because I'm doing like these big cartoonish eyes. But I just, I felt like there was, it was <laughs> too eye-y, too eyeball-y. So uh, once I'm done with a large portion of the coloring process, I just merge it and start cutting it and shrinking it and painting around it, which we'll, we'll get to that eventually. I just thought I'd call that out here. So there's not a whole lot to say on this part. Um, you can see in my rough lines there that I had the base anatomy for her, but then it wasn't pushed enough because it's definitely losing some of the energy of the original drawing. So I pushed a little bit more, but then I wanted to keep that outer edge of her arm, the arm that she has straight. I wanted to keep that as straight as possible to really try and sell that wall that she's sort of near. 
Um, I zoomed in on the hand a little bit there because I just thought you guys might want to see some of the drawing that goes on there. But then I jump over to a different part of her at that point. So we'll jump back to that hand when I come back to it. As I've said in the past, I do these drawings non-linearly, so, you know, I may have been working on the hand, then when I came back to it later, I was like, oh, let's move over to here, and then, oh, let's move over to here, and every time I come back to it, I might be in a different spot. So now we're down here finishing the hand. Not a lot to say here, especially since this is essentially following a, a loose blueprint for um, what's going to happen. You can see that I went ahead and drew her torso in fully without putting the bows in there. Now I do the bows separate, and then that way I can also scoot them around like right there. I wanted to nudge it up a little bit, and uh, same thing with the distant one. So these are all in separate layers, and then I'll erase what's, on, what's going on underneath. And throughout this, I'm keeping my reference open the entire time uh, so that I can make sure that I'm looking at what this is supposed to be um, sort of having fun with. Uh, that way I can make those calls and say, how would I normally draw this? How is in the original? Do I want to change it? Um, if so, how? You know, those types of things. That's actually very similarly to how you might use any kind of reference. Let's say you're drawing a tractor um, and you normally don't draw tractors. You look up tractor reference and there's going to be aspects of that tractor that you're going to want to draw perfect, um, as accurate as possible, and then there's other aspects of that tractor that you're going to say, hey, actually, let's change that, let's make that a little more like this, or let's um, make it more stylized or something. And that's essentially what's happening here. Except instead of deciding if I'm going to make it more stylized, since Renato's piece was quite stylized, it's more about how am I going to stylize it. So now we'll just wrap up the, the skirt part of this outfit, um, the sort of mass of cloth that's down there, and then we'll move to her leg, which should be real quick, knock that out, and then up to her hair, and we'll have a lot more to say once we get to the hair. got that vertical line in there for the back wall and now the hair the real idea behind this was I mean I was following sort of what Renato did but even more so um, I don't know what Renato's thought process was when he was doing his but I just wanted to sort of try to get these big shapes in I wasn't too concerned about whether or not it actually was realistic in any way obviously it's not going to be realistic but I mean even realistic to the degree that it might be in a piece like this. Uh, for instance, the the way the hair ends, it doesn't end in um, little pointy strands, it doesn't end even in sort of more of like a chop cut, it just sort of ends in this big still shape that continues on and on. Uh, I thought that was kind of a nice quality of what Renato had going on. I thought that it felt a little smoky, which sort of fits the vibe of this, and I just wanted to keep that kind of a thing going. So, um, because I always have to mention it, fat pencil, this is all fat pencil. If you don't know what the fat pencil is, there's a link down below. It's also the same as the technical pencil that's in Procreate. It's just been adjusted with its maximum size to be larger than what the default is. So now we're just building the anatomy for the hand, the position that I wanted in. can see here I generally use like more of a block style to, to block in my hands <laughs> um, and then I find opportunities when I'm doing the refinements on it to soften this or, or change this or whatever and 
then once we get the hand done on a separate layer we'll just go ahead and put in the cigarette in the cigarette holder I looked up some reference for this even separate from what Renato had done just because I wanted to make sure that I had all the information I needed to make the right choices there now the smoke I knew I would handle as an effect so there's no line art for the smoke finish off that beret and now we go into the flats the interesting thing about Renato's piece of course is that it's all black and white except for the red although it's not truly black and white because there's a little bit of temperature in there and he's got a little bit of color in the bloom off of his white highlight I decided to not do the color on the bloom but I did uh, I was conscious of my color temperature as I was going throughout the, the gray scaling you could say I wanted her to have a darker skin tone and in deciding on that I knew that I was going to have to refactor her values across the board um, with that dark bustier type thing she's got going on there um, I wanted her hair to be super dark she's black now instead of being white so I was like well I want her hair to be dark enough and then I want that to be separate enough from what she's wearing and then that means I need to really think about the way her gloves are going to be and the way her skirt's going to be and then how her skin plays off of that so that there's clear separation so the color blocking is maintained so once I sort of made that decision I mean I don't really change her skin tone much I might tweak it a little bit later but after I make that decision it has like a ripple effect throughout everything and I have to make some adjustments as I go. This was in the spirit of trying to keep it as similar to the original as possible from a palette dis, uh, point of view. So I could have, if I made her skin darker, gone for like a much lighter glove or something, um, but then that would have betrayed the costuming that the original character had. So I wanted to just try and make sure that I controlled those values to do both at the same time basically. As for my shadows, you can see that I'm doing my select paint, select clear method because there's a one shadow layer on top of everything. You can go into my description down below and uh, see how that's done more in detail. And once I get done with this pass, we start stepping into effects territory where I'm trying to take it to the next level through a bunch of tricks. Uh, Renato's piece had simple, as far as not uh, overworked or not like, you know, lots of layers, um, shadowing going on. And so I wanted to try and keep that. And around this was around the time that I decided that I also wanted to do the big white uh, strong rim light that he had going on. So in making these decisions, now I have to say like, okay, there's a shadow. How, what am I gonna do with the rest of this? What am I going to do to treat this differently than he did, but still be in the same spirit of what he did? So now we're at the point in the layer stack where I do the red and then the bows, I think are the most on top. Uh, so those get cleared and then painted over. Then here we do the, the cast shadow that she has onto the wall. And now you can see really quickly there, it was like, okay, let's get that dark gradient in there. Let's get a little bit of a light source going on. Have a gradient on the wall. And start putting some shines in across her skin. Now I imagined that the black part that's holding her boobs, I imagine that as being uh, like a vinyl-y sort of shiny pleather type thing so I wanted that to be reflective and, and have the rim light that she would also get on her skin and then have some more of that reflectiveness going on there as well now we're doing some of the bounce from the wall that's next to her you can see it there there's also some red bounce from uh, her corset onto the hair start tweaking a couple of things, start desaturating some stuff actually a little bit further than what I originally planned. We got the effect in there for the uh, smoke and then a little bit of vignetting going on. There's a shine in her hair that's been added and then right there is where I adjust her eyes. So that's just cutting it out uh, onto new layer, sizing it appropriately and then going through and doing color picking and painting. That's all that's all that was. Uh, not it's different than what you probably normally see you normally see me do but it's uh, just you know standard uh, color pick paint color pick paint type methodology um, and now here I'm putting in that hard rim light 
uh, that's going to go on her skin to try and, this is where I'm picking up a stylistic cue from the original and saying, yeah, this is important to me to be in here, so let's go ahead and put that in. Now we put the rim light on that pleathery part and get it on her leg as well. And then we're going to blur, duplicate and blur the entire thing to get that bloom going on. I also want to point out here that on the leathery pleathery thing, I also put some bounce from the red, some bounce from the bows, just to try and really sell that that is a highly reflective surface. Or I shouldn't say highly, it's a pretty darn reflective surface. Um, and then I clean up a little bit of that shoulder light because I just didn't really like the way it was add in some little dust particles and uh, then that's basically it. There's a little bit of a temperature change at the end, uh, but that's more or less it. So just for comparison's sake, since that's the whole point of this, let's take another look at Renato's original. You can see the main points here, the value changes, as well as he has the colorized bloom on his uh, rim light and a couple of other uh, little things. And then here's mine again. And so now you can see exactly the changes that I made. This was uh, super fun to do, by the way. I want to thank Renato for inviting me uh, to be one of the artists who did a take on it. And if you're not already following him, I highly recommend you do. So head on over there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, comment, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.